Hello, I am here at Broughton Bluff and I am going to shoot a video of what I take to the crag. I'm doing some shooting on the ropes today and so I just wanted to give kind of a review of what's in my bag as I go to the crag. Uh, also I'm going to be shooting a kind of a what do I carry as I'm ascending the line, what do I go up on the wall with as I shoot. So yeah, let's get, let's get right into it. So here is kind of the kit that I take. Um, I've got my, uh, this is a Sterling HTP static line. I think it's a 9.8. Um, I can't recommend it strongly enough and John Glassberg is the one who I heard about that from he's he's always bragging about this rope uh, it's great static line super light super durable it's my go-to for just about anything these days uh, second I have my topo designs I think this is the minimal um, I think this is the light hip pack actually um, but they are in the middle of a uh, transition to uh, a new product our new name, new design for this product. So uh, more to come on that, but this has been great. And I usually, this is what I take with me when I go to get on the route. I'll usually put all of my camera gear in here, my my um, uh, SD cards, maybe a lens cloth, my lenses, etc. And then I'll just put this around my waist. Um, I'll usually put a uh, a uh, runner on it to kind of back it up to my harness and then I'll, I'll ascend with that and then that becomes my kind of go-to work from bag. It's great, cov it, you know, carries everything I need. Uh, a lot of the times if I'm just shooting, moving around a lot, hiking, I'll take that and it's, it's awesome. So I can't, I can't recommend this bag enough for, for just a lightweight kind of go anywhere, do anything kind of pack traveled all over with this thing as my main my camera bag small enough that all my kit fits in here I can slam it in this and then hit the crag so that gets us to the next piece so this is an f-stop uh, I forget the model it's their kind of it's a little bit older but it's it's um it's awesome I'll put I'll put the specs down in the the description basically this is where I I kind of use this as my main workhorse bag to get me to the to the crag. Uh, so let me open it up here and I'll show you what I have inside. So you'll see straight away I've got a whole bunch of runners. I use these for uh, anchoring myself, you know, backing up should I need to back up any piece of gear like my camera or my bag. I've got a set of gloves. I'm finding that I prefer fingerless gloves, but nonetheless a good set of heavy-duty, well-worn climbing gloves are awesome for ascending. Uh, this is a sport climbing harness. I've, a lot of people like big wall harnesses for, for photography work. I don't know, maybe it's because I have thick thighs, uh, but this is super comfortable for me and I don't find myself having too many uh, problems with it. It's just a Petzl, I think a Corax. It's a great classic harness that, that I love. Uh, then I usually carry some odds and ends. So this is just a regular black diamond ATC style um, repelling device. So I carry that with me just in case I need to, to repel. And for some reason, the other bit of gear that I'm going to get into, you know, I lose it or whatever. Um, I've got a Fifi hook. I sometimes use this Fifi hook to, you know, I just clip it to my harness and then if I need to hold myself tight into the wall, I can use this to hook it onto a bolt or a piece of protection like a stopper or a cam um, or a beaner, something like that. But I use this a lot actually for, for just miscellaneous things while I'm up there. This also I use quite a lot. This is a Wild Country Rope Man, and I use this, sorry, car coming here. I use this a lot of the time for 
Uh, it's it's a mini ascender, and I very often will clip my bag to this and clip this to the rope so that I can separate myself from the bag a little bit. Not the smartest thing to do sometimes, but it works for me. And uh, I don't know, just, just use it in various ways. It's a quick and simple little tool to carry. Don't always take it with me to the, to the you know, on the route, but it's handy. Uh, so that's that. I'll get into the next bit here. So I carry, usually I carry three or four locking carabiners. This is just so if I need to set up an anchor, I've got the flexibility there. And then likewise, usually about three or four um, draws. If I'm on a sport route, especially I'll carry draws, maybe sometimes more of those, but definitely about three or four of them. Uh, this next bit is my kind of basic gear, gear kit, my sender kit. Uh, if The reason why I keep this in a bag is because if I don't carry anything else, it's this little bit right here that keeps me, keeps me kind of going. Uh, the first bit is an ascender, and on it you'll see I have an oval beaner. It's kind of heavy, but does the trick. Uh, a locking beaner, and then these two smaller Metolius beaners. Uh, I forget the name of them, but they're they're awesome. They're they're small, which I like for uh, clipping my bag or backing up little pieces of gear. I can just clip it to that. Um, you know, things that are not critical that don't necessarily need to be locked down with a, a locking beaner. These are great, and I appreciate that they're small. They're well weight rated. You know, they have a, a high load capacity. So if I ever needed to use these for a a real mountaineering or, or climbing situation, I definitely can appreciate them a lot. Uh, and then this is kind of personal preference. I prefer to work with a left-handed ascender. Usually I, I'm only carrying one, and that's usually because I'm on single pitch routes uh, when I shoot. So that's just style thing for me. I usually have a daisy chain in here. Don't always take this with me, but uh, I do like having it. And I'll show you how all this works in a little bit here, but usually I clip this to my harness uh, along with the Etrier or the Aider that some people call, which is this one. So this, I, this is a relatively new piece of gear to me. Uh, it's a single foot, single step Aider, and it's a, it's a Petzl brand. I don't know the name, but it's awesome. It's easily adjustable. I'll, again, I'll show you how this works, but clip this to your, your ascender, put your foot in here. Um, yeah, it's awesome. And then, and then there's a leash here that, that I usually back up to my harness or back up in some other way. And it is, I mean, this, this piece of gear, I can't recommend enough. I have multi-step aiders in various forms and capacities. I, I just find that they get a little bit kind of annoying on single pitch routes. And so this, this is more than enough for me. And then the other final piece of critical gear for this whole rig up is my pregri. So I use this straight to my harness like, like most folks would conventionally and then route the rope through that. And then Again, I'll demonstrate this, but route, rope goes up through this as well, and I, I use kind of a two-to-one pulley system to, to ascend and stay moving on the route. So that's this. The rest of it, I don't really carry anything in here. These are great, you know, a great part of the F-stop bag system, but, you know, I don't really do much with this. I might have some extra, you know, Velcro pieces in here, Looks like there are some cards in there, but I, d I don't even check into that very often. Uh, anybody who's used the F-stop bag knows that kind of the central core to it is these removable ICUs. So these are just cubes that are padded, essentially, that slide into the bottom of the pack. Uh, I have a slightly bigger one that I'll typically carry with me if I have a lot of audio gear, video filming gear. 
Um, but I very rarely need that bigger one. And the great thing about this actually is this, I forget the size, but the smaller version and the slightly larger one that I have both fit into my Pelican case, which I often will carry for traveling or if I'm on a particularly um, rough shoot and need that extra bag protection, I'll carry that. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's dig into it. So dead cat for the road mic that I have in here. Uh, I forget the model of this. I'll, I'll list everything out, but it's a road, I think, you know, video mic to go or something crazy like that. This thing works really well for what I use and, and how frequently I do, um, filming, uh, some cheap Apple headphones just for monitoring audio. <clears throat> this, which is crucial to me, and this is this is also another important component that I'll get into a little bit more. This Peak Design, this is the slide leash. Sorry, this is the leash. I don't believe they call it the slide. Um, but this, along with the um, ascender setup, is is what helps me to keep my my gear, my camera, secure, safe, backed up, etc. So I don't drop it while I'm on the rope. Uh, so I'll get into that a little bit more detail. In here also I have the Sony 70-200 F4. That's more than enough for me. It's super light, pretty compact. Uh, I have a 16-35 to in here, also F4. This is a bag of, of <clears throat> uh, microfiber cloths that I use for wiping off lenses. It's a little overkill. This is a 35 mil 2.8 lens. This is my kind of go-to default lens for just about anything that I shoot. Uh, if I'm out on the street shooting stuff or hiking or getting those shots in between, I often carry this because it's nice and light, super simple. Uh, if I only take one camera body, one lens, this is the lens that goes with me. And then also in here I have business cards. This is my SD card wallet, which is a Think Tank Pixel Pocket. I uh, don't have a ton in here, but more than enough for me at the moment. Uh, so yeah, I carry that with me. Um, this is also helpful. It's a Goal Zero Venture 30. So this thing is pretty badass. I use this if I'm out on a shoot, I get low on the batteries. Everyone, everyone that has switched over to Sony mirrorless cameras, which is, is what I have in here, um, complains about the battery life. And you know, I've found it largely to be a non-issue. Um, part of the reason for that is I, I do have two extra spare batteries I carry with me, and at the most I've ever only tapped into that second extra. Um, but this thing is part of the reason why I don't have issue. I carry this thing with me. It's a USB rechargeable power brick, essentially. And if I put my camera in a bag to hike to a next shoot or to hike out or move around a little bit, if my camera is stationary and I'm not using it, I'll often plug it into this, shove this in my bag, and just let it recharge on the go. And between that and the extra battery or two that I have, I've never had issue with, with power in any way. And I'm just conservative about how I use it and smart and turn off stabilization when I don't need it. And... I've never had a problem with it. So this is my Sony camera, a7 II. I switched from Nikon and I gotta say, this has been life-changing for me. Sold all my Nikon gear, bought all Sony gear, and it's been awesome. I, I spend so much, I mean, it's just been great. Both, I, I have a whole blog post about this, so I won't go on about it too much, but this thing has been life-changing for me. It's so much lighter and, and simpler and faster for me, and yeah, it's awesome. Uh, this is another Topo Designs product. This is just a little bit of a bag that I carry around that has, you'll see my spare batteries in here. Uh, it has a couple of Allen wrenches, spare Peak Design. Uh, I forget what they call these little circular bits, but they clip onto your your uh, camera so that you can attach their camera straps to it. So that's what I typically carry here. And then uh, just to, these are also the Peak Design things. So you'll see that these are attached to the L bracket that I have 
really right stuff L bracket on this camera. Um, it slides in to be closer up to the to the side of the camera, but I I often shoot video, and so it's easier easy for me to to get access to these ports if I just extend this plate out a little bit or remove it entirely. Um, in any case, that's that's that. So I'll demonstrate that a little bit more and, and how I use all that stuff in a little bit. That's the that's the bag system for now. So yeah, with that, I'm out. All right, I almost forgot to share the most important piece of equipment that I carry with me when I go on a shoot. It's this, and you probably can't see it very well because of the reflection. This is my shot list. It's not always this big. It's not always on a, on a clipboard. Usually it's in a tiny notebook, but it's super, super important for me to be clear before I go to a shoot on what it is I'm going to shoot. So I often carry, uh, just get into the shade a little bit here. I often carry some sort of shot list that clearly lays out the most critical, important things to capture and the importance of those. So yeah, I always carry something like this with me. And if I can, I pre-plan as much ahead of time as possible so that when I get to the crag, I know exactly what my goals are for the day and know what I want to get done. And then I share that with whoever's with me. So if I'm shooting with an athlete, it's important for them to know what are my intentions, what are the photos for, what are they going to be used for, what we need to capture, and it's all about the team. So you got to work collaboratively. Just doing some hiking, getting up on the old uh, Broughton Bluff biz. And uh, yeah, sunlight's kicking through, feels nice. Psyched to be out here. Psyched that it's not rainy or windy. Biz. Don't shortcut people, because it causes severe erosion. Keep on climbing. Take care of your areas. All right, we are here at a little bit, a little place that's, forget the crag name, but this is a line called Classic Crack. So uh, I'm here solo, but I'm gonna set up a line, a static line on that route and um, demonstrate how I use all my sh when I'm climbing and taking photos.